on the record miscellaneous hearing tape 6A2. The case before the court is Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Sharita Nicole Ramsey. Case number 98CR1259. Present for the Commonwealth is Assistant Commonwealth Attorney John Ballier. Present for Ms. Ramsey, who's present here in the courtroom, is her, her attorney, Leo Smith. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, also this, this morning with me is Detective Ann Duncan from Crimes Against Children. Hello, Detective. How are you? Good to see you again. We're on for sentencing today. Mr. Smith, have you had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence investigation report with your client? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Are there any changes to be made? Uh, there's one change. I've noted it on the sheet here. At the time it was filled out, um, she was pregnant with her third child. Uh, she has since given birth to her third child, and her mother's here and has three children. So um, that, that's the only correction. And I've noted that on the sheet um, that she's signed as well, Your Honor. Thank you. When, uh, in reviewing this case, I went back and I looked at the plea sheets, and we accepted a voluntary plea of guilty to criminal abuse in the second degree, which was an amendment down from criminal abuse in the first degree. The recommendation was on the amended charge, three years if to serve, five, year, five years if probated. The defense is free to argue for probated sentence. The Commonwealth is free to argue for time to serve. So, Mr. Smith, I'm going to allow you to make your argument in favor of probation. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Judge, um, I'd like to say a few things, and then I have a couple people who'd like to speak on her behalf, if I might. Uh, the first thing I'd point out to the court is uh, she does have the three children. And she has custody of all three of them, including the child in question. That custody has been transferred back through family court. And so she is the custodian of the three children as well as being the natural mother. Her mother's present, who's a grandmother, who's uh, in court and uh, um, actually is watching the three children um, as we speak. Um, but she can confirm that uh, the court has seen fit, notwithstanding what occurred in this case, to return the custody to her. Um, I've also given to the court uh, numerous documents. Uh, the top document, uh, she was required to go through parenting classes, which she did and successfully completed it, um, as well as there are numerous letters there, uh, quite a few of them having been personalized. Uh, a lot of other individuals uh, who agreed with the same assessment and simply signed uh, the same letters. I think about halfway through the court will see that. So there was a mix of uh, several people writing their own. There were um, some who simply used the uh, one that they agreed with and then added some personal comments on the bottom. There are letters from her minister um, and neighbors and families and, and quite a few people, uh, including from the, I think the daycare center is one of them on the top as well, who I think this court's well aware of. Anytime there is a, uh, when you have children and uh, daycare is used in any, Capacity, those individuals become pretty familiar too when they see you pick up the children, drop them off, and see interaction as far as between the mother and the children. And I think that's a pretty favorable letter there as well. Nothing I'm saying, Your Honor, is intended to minimize what occurred in this case whatsoever. Um, however, the question now is is it appropriate to grant her probation or should she be sent on to prison? Um, I would also stress for the court, uh, which I know is a very unusual situation the very, very minimal past record of this individual. Uh, she has one shoplifting, and in this case, and that's it. As it indicates, uh, no juvenile record was found. There's no domestic violence orders against her, emergency protective orders against her. There's no allegation of her being a member of gang. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. And the shoplifting case that occurred prior to this particular case, uh, and since this case has occurred, there's been no problems whatsoever. So for the last couple of years, um, actually, the incident in question here, I think is April 30th, 98, I believe is what, yes, as the PSI indicates, we're talking about over two and a half years now um, since the incident occurred, and there's no allegation whatsoever in terms of any problems with her children or doing anything, which is, of course, borne out by the fact that, that she's also been given custody back of the child in question here. Um, I think in view of the fact that she has you know, this lack of any kind of significant past record, uh, the fact that she has shown some progress by doing the parenting classes, the fact that there's been an outpouring of support by family and friends, 
including a daycare um, center. Um, I do think, Your Honor, it, it's appropriate to grant a probation. There's a number of conditions the court could put on her. It, it, those are actually uh, recommended through the um, PSI as well, which would address any concerns. Um, but it does appear to me that with the track record she's already shown since this case has been pending, as well as the steps she's taken to better herself, uh, the children are much better off, obviously. Um, I mean, she is the person that they rely upon along with, with the uh, grandmother uh, that, that this is an ideal situation for the court to grant probation. If, if she doesn't toe the line, obviously the court would be, you know, be in a position to, to send her off to prison. But I, I don't think there's going to be any question about it that you're not going to see her again uh, if the court were to grant her probation. Her mother did ask, who's the grandmother of the children, if she could briefly address the court um, as well as Ms. Ramsey. So if, if she can just do it from there, Judge, so that. That's fine. Mrs. Ramsey, do you want to speak to the court as well? All I'd like to say is I know in my heart that my daughter has not did anything wrong. And to take these babies away from her, it would be the wrong thing to do because her sons love her dearly. She's a great mother to be a young girl. I know for a fact, I know we, we don't have any past histories of child abuse. We know nothing about child abuse. We've never experienced a child abuse. It's nothing but love in my home. My kids only know love. And I know Sharita has not done nothing wrong. She's already been convicted of it. People can say what they want to say. But at me as a mother, and as long as it's a God in heaven, we know that this child has not did anything. And it, no one has dealt with what I've had to deal with as far as Keontae. Nobody's watched him beat his head against a floor and scream and cry because he can't be with his mother. Nobody's there at nights when I have to be up with him crying in his sleep for his mother. Nobody's experienced this for me. If y'all check the records, y'all see this baby has never did nothing. You can call CMY clinic anywhere. They would tell you anything, Had it, fevers, anything. The child is calling the hospital. She's not that foul. She's not a foul person at all. She has nothing but love in her heart because it's all we know is love. And to take these babies away from her would be very wrong. It's this the wrong thing to do because she hasn't done anything wrong. And it's sad that people believe that she could be this bad because she's not. And God in heaven knows she's not. And it would not be fair to Keontae Arthur or Geron to take her away from these babies. Because if she has to come to my house for her to be with her babies, that's what she's going to do. This baby has lost her apartment. She cannot get a decent job or anything because of something she has not done. And God knows she has not done this. God in heaven knows. And that's our witness is God in heaven. And you couldn't think of me as a grandmother very much because for me to sit back and okay her burning him, I love him just as much as I love Sharita. And I wouldn't let nothing happen to none of them. None of them. And I would be less than a grandmother to uphold something like this. I've been with her from day one since this happened because I know she's innocent. I know she is. I know this in my heart. And there's not very much that I can say because y'all are jealous anyway. So it's nothing I can really say, but it'd be wrong to lock my baby up. It'd be wrong. God knows it would be. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Judge, um, I, um, I don't, I briefly spoke to Ms. Ramsey while her, her mother was speaking. Uh, I don't think there's anything that, that she needs to add. I think it's apparent in terms of um, she, she would take care of the children. So we don't have anything else to add. We should. Mr. Pellier. <coughs> yes. Judge, I've got two photographs taken of Keontae after this incident. Basically what we're talking about are at least five, possibly six different inflictions of this iron on that child. And while I recognize 
that this defendant's mother doesn't want to believe that she did it. She's admitted on three separate occasions that she did. <clears throat> the most recent being August when she pled guilty to these charges. And what she pled guilty to was wantonly inflicting injury on her son Keontae, placing him in a situation that might have caused him serious physical injury or that it was cruel confinement, torture, or cruel punishment. Judge, in looking at 533.010 and the factors that are involved in whether or not she should be probated, that section says that probation shall be granted unless the court is of the opinion that imprisonment is necessary for the protection of the public because. And I think there are two grounds <coughs> that apply under these facts. The first is that there's a substantial risk that the defendant will commit another crime. And here's why I think that. Judge, there are lots of studies that talk about the different kinds of infliction of injuries to children and the kind that are treatable and the kind that can be prevent, that can prevent further infliction of injuries. And one of the most resistant to treatment is the cruel, premeditated infliction of pain, such as cigarette burns, or in this case, burns with an iron. There's a lot of denial that goes into that. We've heard from her mother that she didn't do anything wrong, and I suspect that that's a reflection of Sherita Ramsey's position as well. There's, there's a reason why this case has been pending for 33 months and 25 days. And the reason is that despite the three admissions of guilt, there's a tremendous layer of denial, denial that anything was wrong. The second factor that I think the court has to look at is whether or not probation will unduly depreciate the seriousness of the crime. And in this instance, I think that probation truly would depreciate the seriousness of what she's done. <clears throat> Children naturally look to their parents, even abusive parents, for protection. That protection wasn't given Keontae back on April 30th of 98, and we asked the court to sentence her to prison. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ballier. Would you be kind enough to bring those photographs up to me? Yes, I haven't seen them. Judge, can I uh, briefly respond? I can make it quick. Yes, sir. Uh, Judge, um, obviously the court has the track record before this incident, and the court, uh, as Mr. Ballet pointed out, we're talking about 33 months now and nothing in 33 months. I don't know what other track record you can have since the incident to indicate that there's not going to be any additional problems with it. Not only did she go through the parenting classes for 33 months, we're talking Zippo, no problems as far as with the children. So I think that track record supports the idea that she's not going to have any additional problems. And we're in a situation where do we send her off because the, the fathers don't have custody and don't take care of the children? Do we take them away for the three children and put them in prison? Or are they better off, especially since she's demonstrated pre and then post this, that there's not going to be any problems in the future? So I, I, I would ask the court to consider that. This is absolutely, without a question, the hardest case I've had. I have even been told by Ms. Ramsey's previous lawyer that she voluntarily pled guilty to this charge because she was protecting the person who did it. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, I mean, I, I find that to be a horrendous act. Uh, because if somebody other than Ms. Ramsey did it and she has voluntarily pled guilty to this charge, uh, if somebody else truly did it and she's protecting that individual, 
and, and not wanting that individual to come to justice, that's unforgivable in my mind. Judge, I don't, I, all I can, if, if the court wants me to say something, respond to that. Obviously, I did not have this case before, and, and she's not, since I've had the case, I mean, I'm not making any allegation that there's anybody who's being protected. Uh, I'm not sure the circumstances or what uh, what caused that to be said. I don't know what happened there. But she's, she's pled and she obviously accepts responsibility. I know this is an unusual case and unusual circumstance. You all have made excellent arguments on both sides of this case. Uh, I know there are people here uh, wanting me to do one of two different things on both sides. I'm simply not today at this very moment in a position where I'm ready to make this decision. Uh, as difficult as it will be for everybody, I'm going to schedule another hearing to come back. Yes, sir. Let me ponder this. I'm going to read each and every one of these letters and support. Um, and I'm just going to think about this case. Yes, sir. What uh, date does the court want us to? I'll go ahead and tend to the sheet back to the court as far as the other Okay. Okay. Vanessa, please call me if you're back there. <coughs> What's your all schedule look like at the end of the day today? Judge, I have a meeting at uh, 3.30. Uh, that probably will go through the, the rest of the day. Uh, I can meet before that, but not not after that. Three or after. And I, yeah, I've got a meeting that I'll be out of the office until I've got a 3.30 hearing, TRO hearing. Sheriff, will you go back and get the uh, calendar for this year? Vanessa seems to not be there. <coughs> and also for the court. It's called The Untreatable Family. It's by David Jones. Um, and I'd like the court to just have that available. I'd like very much to read that. If you'll let Mr. Smith have a copy. Judge, would you, um, obviously I don't have any problem with the tendering it with the court. Um, man, if, if, since we're going to take a different date, if the court gives me enough time, because I'm sure, I mean, I'd like to read that article and I would suspect there's probably some there may or may not be some counter views as far as professionals go on it. You can tender whatever you'd like to to rebut that and just make sure that. I would definitely give it to Mr. Valley. Valley gets a copy. about Monday the 29th at 11.45. That's fine. Is that, does that work for you all? That's fine with me. Is that? Judge, give me the time again. 11.45. Yes, that's fine. Thank you. And I apologize to everybody for the delay, but this is a case and a decision that I don't take lightly and I'm not going to rush into it. That's fine, Judge. 11.45 on Monday. See you. See you then. Thank you very yeah. much. Can I get a copy in the back? Let me, let me make a copy of this. Yeah. Why don't you all wait for me right outside? Just wait for me right outside. If you'd like... Um,
Yeah, can I see you for just a minute, though? If you and Mr. Ballier will come up. I just think it's inappropriate that she's got the kids in here during the sentencing hearing. And my suggestion to you would be talk to Grandma and let something be done with the okay. kids. I mean, okay. you know, if Grandma wants to be here. Well, that's that's it. Um, I don't know who else they have here, Judge. The reason I needed another minute was her, um, apparently the father of the child is here, who's asked to address the court. Okay. Um, and the attorney who represents the child had previously uh, indicated a desire to indicate to the court wishes in terms of the court granting probation. That I have not had a chance to speak to them. I was just made aware. Okay, that's um, fine. And Mr. Bailey I mean, said that Detective Duncan would like to address the court, too. I mean, I can ask... Um, I mean, I can ask the mother, who's the grandmother, uh, to wait outside with the children. I mean, I, um, I mean, the children are going to know if their mother is taken away one way, whether it's in court or out of court. I mean, if that's the court's concern, as far as, I mean, they obviously know if she's gone. One well, way I or just, other. I think, in sentencing, I mean, I think it's inappropriate at a sentencing hearing. I think it's inappropriate to have kids here, but okay. that's just my opinion. Um, well, I'll ask the uh, grandmother. I mean, I, I can't, I I can't bar her from the courtroom. It's an open courtroom, and she's got a right to be here. Well, I understand what the court's going to I will ask uh, the grandmother whether or not, uh, if, if the court's indicating you would like the grandmother, even though you're not ordering her to do it, to wait outside with the children to keep them out, then I, I can certainly relay that request. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. okay. Yeah, just let us know when you're ready. We'll go grab him and we'll do that one. We may do another pre. Miscellaneous hearing tape 7A1. Case before the court is Commonwealth of Kentucky versus Sharita Nicole Ramsey. Case number 98CR1259. Present for the Commonwealth is Assistant Commonwealth Attorney John Ballier. Also seated at council table is Detective Ann Duncan. Present for Ms. Ramsey, who's present in the courtroom, is her attorney, Leo Smith. Um, it is my understanding in talking with the attorneys right before we started this hearing that the both sides would like to present uh, some comments to the court. So, Mr. Smith, I'm going to allow you all to have whoever you want to make presentations to the court do that, and then I'll allow the Commonwealth to do the same thing. Uh, Judge, we've decided in terms of any additional proof um, just to allow one other person to address the court. Uh, and uh, he is present, and he's not the father of the child of question, Keontae, but he is the father of his uh, stepbrother who's had a lot of uh, contact as far as the family. He just asked if he could address the court. Okay. If, um, sir, if you want to you wanna just step forth. And why don't you just come on up here? I can just let him If you want to do it from right the there, court. that's fine. If you would prefer to take the witness stand, that's fine too, Whatever, wherever you're comfortable. Would you just tell the court your name and how you know the family? Um, my name's Arthur Pruitt Sr. I like those family to her. We've been together like over four years. That's how I ended up having a son with him. And she ain't never did nothing wrong. He's a good person. I just want to know if y'all give her a try. Okay. Thank you very much. In terms of uh, additional uh, proof, uh, there are several other family members and friends present. Uh, I think the courts probably had the opportunity to review the various handwritten statements as well as uh, the one that various people signed off on. We don't have additional proof in that respect to add. 
Okay. Um, I just have a, a few other things to add in terms of the issue of probation, but if the court wants to wait to hear if there's anything else the Commonwealth wants to add, or do you want me to go ahead and address the issue now as far as uh, the subject you, argument? You can go ahead and address it now. Um, and then because from the Commonwealth side, I think the only person who expressed an interest in addressing the court was Detective Duncan. Yes, sir. Um, Judge, I did look at the article which Mr. Ballier uh, furnished to the court last week, and I did not I feel a need to have to supply any additional articles. I, I've read that article. Um, I quite frankly don't think it's applicable here. I mean, that whole article is um, designed, I think, for one person's opinion in the issue of whether or not you terminate rights or whether or not you do treatment before terminating rights or what you do along those lines. It doesn't address the issue before this court whether or not an individual such as she should be probated. It's also I think apples and oranges in terms of her particular situation as opposed to all the other various variables and examples that are given in that. So in terms of the article itself, um, I didn't supply anything else, but what I would like to say to the court is just reiterate, and I know the court's already heard uh, the various arguments, but having said that, um, you know, the best proof that the court can have of what will happen is how has she reacted or how she acted since she's been charged with the offense. And there's no allegation here of anything else, Your Honor, whatsoever. Not only that, this court, um, well, family court, which is where an article like this I think would be more appropriately uh, directed towards, has dealt with this issue already in terms of the family, what should be done with the child, uh, should the child be reunited with the mother, is the child at some risk, et cetera. And the family court, through um, the family court judge who was in the best position after taking everybody's view into account, including the guardian ad litem who was appointed to represent the child and who visited the home, et cetera, and, and did uh, for the court an assessment as far as in the interest of the child, uh, obviously took the position that uh, Keontae should be re reunited as far as with the mother. And it, in fact, she has all three children. Uh, at the court's request, and she was agreeable. We've asked um, one of the friends to uh, keep the uh, three children outside, and the three boys are outside right now. Uh, but family court has already delved into this whole issue. Is this likely to occur again? Is, uh, is this a situation where the family is better off with her being away from the boys, or do her boys need her? And family court came to the conclusion and restored custody to her that um, she should have custody of the children in question, in particular the one child, and custody has been transferred as far as back to her. She has custody. Um, Mr. Um, Ballet pointed out to the court the other day, 33 months. Well, I think that bodes well for her in terms of that you would not see her again. Um, you know, there's really nothing else we can offer in terms of proof of that other than the track record uh, since this incident itself and the fact looking at her record, this is one of the best records in terms of a criminal record that this court's going to see. I mean, it's an extremely minimal past record. Nothing juvenile, no emergency protective orders, no other type of intervention. It had, I believe, the one that was shoplifting case, and that was it. Um, so I, I think her lack of record, the fact that they are dealing with this, the fam fact the family court has explored this and taken steps, and the certificate that we furnished the court demonstrating that she has uh, complied with what they wanted her to do and will continue to do that. I think she's an excellent candidate to probate and I think the individual who's going to be hurt the most here if the court sends her is going to be the three boys in question including Keontae if she's sent uh, to prison because there's no way they're not going to know that their mother's gone uh, and it's going to be away from them for a long time and I do not think that this warrants it um, and I do not think it's in the interest of the children. In fact, I think it's, it would be adverse to take their mother away from them, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Ballier? Detective Duncan? Thank you, Your Honor, for allowing me the opportunity to go on record. I realize that you've probably already reached a decision in this case, but I do appreciate the opportunity to go on record for about eight minutes, maybe. I'm not standing before you today to say that Sherita Ramsey is the worst person I've ever met. And I'm not saying that she's even the worst mother that I've ever met. And I'm not saying that she does not feel love for her children. But this is not love court, and I'm not the love police. 
I'm asking that Sharita Ramsey be allowed to be a mother to her children after she gets out of prison. The existence of Ms. Ramsey's additional children was made part of the record on Friday, as was the fact, according to Pamela Ramsey, that none of the fathers are taking part in their children's lives. I do not ask the court to penalize Ms. Ramsey for this. I do ask the court not to consider this sympathetically or as a reason for leniency. To do so would give unfair advantage to women who choose not to have children or who can't have children. Because the defense has chosen to make this situation a plea for leniency, I ask that the court view this situation simply for exactly what it is and no more. That's fecundity and irresponsibility. I ask the court not to consider the decision of Child Protective Services to unify this family when determining punishment. It is the goal and the mission of CPS to unify families after a period of time in spite of past abuse. For the court to interpret unification of a family by CPS as justification for leniency would negate the purpose of criminal court and greatly diminish the horror of child abuse. I do ask the court to consider that in spite of CPS's unification, family court did find Sharita Ramsey guilty of burning her son. I ask the court to acknowledge that even if Ms. Ramsey served every day of a maximum prison sentence, that none of her children would go cold or go hungry. Relatives or the state of Kentucky could care for these children. And these options are available. These children are not dependent on Ms. Ramsey as the plea for sympathy on Friday would hope you to believe. I ask that the court not reward Sharita Ramsey for having committed no new criminal offenses that we're aware of since burning her son. Your Honor, we are supposed to obey the law. I ask that you not reward Ms. Ramsey with leniency for doing what we are all supposed to do. I ask the court not to consider the commission of no new acts of child abuse that we're aware of as an indication of future lawful behavior. To our knowledge, Ms. Ramsey never burned anyone five times in the face with a hot iron until she had a 21-month-old son. I'm sure no one then would have ever thought she would commit such a horrific act, but she did. I ask that the court instead consider that Ms. Ramsey has not reoffended, to our knowledge, because of the assistance and supervision she has received since she burned her son. I ask that the court not consider that almost three years later, Keontae Ramsey's face has healed. The mention of God was brought into this courtroom on Friday, and I ask the court not to reward Sharita Ramsey for God's grace and mercy on this child. Keontae's own body and God's grace healed his face. God showed mercy on this child when Sharita Ramsey would not. The child still bears scars that may never go away. Your Honor was told on Friday that the children would be safe with their mother. If the court considers this, then I ask Your Honor to remember the facts of this case. Ms. Ramsey denied medical care to the victim for hours. The only person she cared about protecting then was herself. Now with the full support of her mother, who also denies that anything wrong happened, I believe these children may not receive medical treatment when they need it for fear of speculation or detection. As long as this family is committed to protecting Sharita and covering for Sharita's actions, these children are at great risk. I ask that the court disregard all letters of support for Ms. Ramsey that it has in its possession as they are not based on fact. Possibly these letters may have been appropriate for family court but not in criminal court where decisions are made on fact. These letters, many of them form letters and written by someone other than who signed them, are from people with absolutely no knowledge of the truth of this case. And I ask that the court consider these letters totally irrelevant for the purpose of sentencing in criminal court. I'm asking that in response to the information that Keontae Ramsey now beats his head against the floor, and screams for his mother, that the court not assume he is calling for his mother as Pamela Ramsey would like the court to believe. 
This aggressive behavior is classic textbook behavior for children who have been abused. And studies have shown that traumatic events such as fear and horrific pain are remembered in even very young children. If the court considers Pam Ramsey's explanation of Keontae's behavior, I ask the court to instead consider that Keontae is maybe screaming for his mother to stop. Sharita has admitted on three occasions that she burned her son, burned him multiple times on the face with this iron. When deciding whether or not to grant leniency for Ms. Ramsey, I ask that leniency be reserved for defendants who show remorse. Some remorse, any remorse. Sharita Ramsey has admitted calling her son over, pinning him to the floor, and burning him five, possibly six times. And yet in 33 months, she has never said that she was sorry. I ask that the court find that reason enough not to show leniency to her. I ask that your honor consider the amended plea to a lesser crime than was actually committed ample and sufficient leniency in this case. I'm asking that your honor not interpret Sharita Ramsey's recantation and denial of the facts of past 33 months as signs of embarrassment or shame or even remorse. To assume that Ms. Ramsey is embarrassed or ashamed would be giving far too much credit to someone who has had every opportunity to say that she was sorry and hasn't. When entering her plea of guilty, she still never said she was sorry or that if she had it to do over again, she would do anything differently. That is frightening. One only has to watch the videotape of Ms. Ramsey's last testimony in court to be chilled at the absolute total absence of remorse in this woman. I ask that the court sentence Ms. Ramsey based on the facts of her crime and not on the understandably emotional plea of her mother. If the court sees fit to take the grandmother's plea into consideration, I ask the court to consider one who is not competent to speak, and that's a 21-month-old child who on April 30, 1998, was simply being a child. A child who was called over by this woman who grabbed this iron, pinned it to the floor, and burned him over and over and over and over and over again. I ask you to imagine the terrifying fear and the pain that this child endured at her hands and the scars that he doesn't understand when he looks in the mirror and who will no doubt be told that he did it to himself. I ask the court to have compassion and have sympathy, but not for the defendant. With these facts in mind, and with all due respect to your honor, who I know who has spent time and thought on this case, I believe that this should be one of the easiest cases you will ever have to decide. I ask that the court rule it very fair, very appropriate, and very just to require Sharita Ramsey to serve her punishment in prison. Thank you. Thank you, Detective. Anything else from the Commonwealth? Mr. Ballier and Mr. Smith, you all have done a, uh, as you always do, a very admirable job in arguing this case uh, compassionately and fairly. Uh, this is a difficult case uh, because uh, of all the different people that it affects. Um, I've read each letter that's been submitted to the court, and now I'm called upon to decide whether to impose the sentence in the plea agreement to serve or to be probated. Um, Ms. Ramsey, in August, of 1998, I believe it was. I may have the date wrong, but you volunteered. No, in August of 2000, you voluntarily pled guilty to this charge. Uh, you said to this court very clearly, very distinctly, that you burned Chianti's face with a hot iron. In doing so, you violated uh, a duty that you had to your child to protect him and to make sure that he was safe. Um, and although it's hard to fathom, anybody in this courtroom has a hard time believing that you would do such a thing or under what circumstances you would do it, the fact remains is that you did it and you've admitted to this court under oath that you did it. It's the opinion of this court that probation would unduly depreciate the seriousness of your crime. Your motion for probation is denied. It will be the 
sentence of this court on the charge of criminal abuse in the second degree. You're sentenced to three years to serve. You will begin serving that sentence today. I wish you the very best. And I hope that when you get out of prison that you will be able to resume being a parent to your children and protect them and covet them and keep them from harm. Good luck to you, ma'am. This court's adjourned. Can you put her in the booth for me to talk to her? Yeah, that's fine. Mr. Ballier, I have these photographs that you tendered to the courts that you can have back for your file.